Welcome to Clips, a quick review of facts or factoids taken from our more in-depth videos. Today, I'd like to point out how to do a quick and dirty evaluation of a revolver's lockup and timing. Now, before we go any further, I have to call out a very specific behavior that I see all the time at gun shows. At the American Gun Show, 9 out of 10 wheel guns are going to work just like this Smith & Wesson or, say, a Colt uh, Army Special and those two general families of guns. And both of them use the same sort of cylinder stop mechanism, which means that as I bring this hammer back, there's some ticking. Right there, that tick is happening right before the hammer comes down, right? And then, that's the hammer lock. Now, you will see many a uh, US gun enthusiast doing this test at a gun show. They'll pull it back, they'll listen for that first click, that's the cylinder stop kicking in. And then the second one, which actually rolled in as I was rolling my thumb, is the hammer actually locking. So what they want to hear is that the cylinder lock kicks in just before the hammer's full cock position. And then they'll check timing by trying to roll the cylinder in this position. Now, because of the way that this revolver works, that system works because the cylinder is already locked. It's the same lock that's gonna be there after I pull the trigger and the hammer falls, boom, and it's the same lock up until I release everything and then it's gonna loosen up a little bit and especially on these Smith & Wessons, it's gonna stay really locked until I actually start to get the hammer back by pulling the trigger. That's fine for testing this gun, but the interesting thing about this gun and its Colt brethren that do the same thing is that they're actually the anomaly. Let me show you. Here is a beautiful and very large old Tranter. Now, when we look at this gun, there's a big clue. There's none of those little rectangular cylinder stops on the outside of the cylinder. Instead, there's these scallops that then have a terminus. So, gentle, gentle stop, okay? And there's six of those, and they're part of the alignment system in this gun. So in this gun, the way it works is the hand is pushing one way, and then, actually this way, and then a little cylinder stop is attached to the trigger, and when you pull the trigger, the trigger rises up and it forms the stop, all right? Now, interesting thing, this doesn't work until the trigger is pulled. So, let's try the Colt slash Smith & Wesson gun show method. So I see a lot of guys that pick up these old Tranters or other old European revolvers, and they cock the hammer back, and then they go, oh, there's so much slop, look at, Look at all that slop. And in this case, it's still not that bad, but it, that's not necessarily gonna keep you from shaving around. So, let me pull this trigger. All right, I've pulled the trigger, and let me just hold it, and I'll hold it flat so you guys can see what's going on. If I keep holding the trigger and let the hammer down, it's all gone. There's no movement in this gun whatsoever, and I've inspected it. This thing has perfect alignment on all six chambers, which means you would have been confused into thinking that this gun was out of time, but really you just didn't understand the mechanism. Now, the good news is this method works universally as long as you pull the trigger fully through and don't death grip it to the rear, just pull it fully through. On rare occasion, you may have a revolver that will allow the hammer to slip and still has more hand travel in it. So if you death grip this to the rear, you could lock up a gun that otherwise might do a little round shaving. So just go until it releases the hammer and then stop, and then let the hammer down and then check your timing. If it's good, if it's nice and tight, awesome. Now, just because the cylinder has come to a halt, that doesn't mean the revolver is in time. Remember, we're trying to actually align each and every chamber, usually six of them, but of course there are exceptions, each chamber with the barrel as perfectly as possible. So, how do we check that alignment? Well, frankly, the only simple way really rattles a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> because ultimately, there's only one end of this tube that we can see down with our eye. And that means the traditional solution is, well, to just shove your eye over the end of the muzzle of a wheel gun. Unloaded, mind you. Now, Jeff Cooper is rolling in his grave at this very statement. Thanks to modern technology, we can actually get the same effect with a camera attached to my phone. All right, boys, we are now looking down the muzzle of a revolver with a cell phone camera so that we can see how to check for the alignment 
of the chamber and the bore. In this case, I have lit things from behind with a very strong LED flashlight that I'm shining through the gate of a gate-loading Tranter revolver. Now, with the 450 bore, it's a little easier to see down in there than, you know, if this were like a little 7.5, but you get the idea. Right now, you can see the firing pin because one chamber is perfectly aligned with the bore. If I start to rotate that, we'll see it on a line, and then, whoop, here comes the next one already, and boom, it's aligned. And you can even hear the tick over because this is a very well-timed gun. Now, in this case, this is a good alignment. So uh, I don't want to sit here and go through the whole process necessarily, but let's do a little pretend. I'm going to pretend that we've sat here and pulled this trigger all the way back. The hammer has gone back and come down, crashing down. So the hammer is down, the trigger is all the way back. During that process, the cylinder would have rotated exactly once if the gun was remotely operational. And if we hear that hammer fall, and our finger is still on the trigger and we see this alignment right here, we're feeling pretty good. This is a fairly well aligned gun. But if we were to see this, eh, we might need to do a little timing adjusting. If we see this, do not shoot this gun. Uh, you're gonna have major shaving issues. You're going to put a lot of strain on the parts that don't need to be there. It's a gun that needs serviced. Now, if you're looking for a clue as to what needs servicing, the direction matters. So. Uh, it depends on the rotation direction of your gun. Pay attention to that. But if your gun under rotates, so uh, let's go ahead and start rotating this. And we get this far and stop. Well, that's a pretty good sign that our hand is a little too short and needs to be extended. And if the hand were extended properly, it would probably get us into alignment bumping up against the stop. Now, if we were to over rotate, so uh, actually what tends to happen is you tend to be in a situation where the hand is timed well enough to get us to here, but whenever you start to wiggle the cylinder with the hammer down and the trigger pulled, you can sort of do this, right? You can over rotate it or bring it back to the hand or over rotate it. If you can over rotate it, then that means that your stop is not correctly aligned and probably needs to be widened up a bit or maybe one of the scallops has gotten chewed up on the outside of the cylinder. So your stop is the problem if it starts to come into an over rotation situation. Now, this is just an extra little tidbit. It's not supposed to be uh, definitive in all cases because they're always unique revolvers, but you get the idea. This is good, this is bad. Good, oh bad. Now I wanna be very clear. This is an expedient in the field way of checking timing. It doesn't guarantee the gun is fully functional or even safe, and actually, I can use this particular Colt 187802 to illustrate an issue that I ran into just a few weeks ago at a gun show. <laughs> this is a lovely big bore revolver and a unique piece of US service history as we're going to find out. But I had encountered one just like this at the gun show the other day and it had a little problem that the owner was unaware of, which is if I go ahead and cock this back and play with the cylinder, she feels nice and tight. That's that one we talked about, Colton Smith and Wesson's feeling pretty good with the hammer back. If I drop this down, hmm, she also felt pretty good, just like mine here. By the way, this is not the damaged one. However, whenever I release the trigger, like you just saw there, something bad would happen. And I wanna explain why it would happen using this particular gun. Take a look at this little tooth. And by the way, when I say little, I don't mean this one, I mean, down in here, this little tooth. He's actually a separate part of the revolver and he's serving a very critical role. Without him in place, let me show you something. All right, I left the gate open. Let's uh, index this cylinder for a moment. All right, she rolled over just fine. What was that? You see it roll backwards? Okay, so I shot round number one. Now I'll shoot round number one again and then I guess I'm gonna shoot round number one again. I am going to forever shoot the same singular round. And the reason why that's happening is because I actually have the loading gate open. If I close it and start working the gun again, round one, boom, round two, round three. That's because that one little part in there is actually responsible for preventing the counter rotation of the cylinder due to the uneven weight. Now, 
and the drag of the hand, as a matter of fact. Now, the problem with the gun I saw at the gun show is that he wanted top dollar, and unfortunately, trying to replace a part as small and perfectly crafted as that, that, by the way, it's press fit into the gun, whew, that's going to be real hard, and I'm going to regret that purchase very quickly. There can always be other problems, but for most revolvers, what I've shown you today is a great way to better prevent buying an absolute lemon. Now, if you'd like to know more about a variety of revolver mechanisms, check out our Introductory 101 video or any specific model in our long format primer episodes. Have a good one.